Thanks for joining us tonight. Really excited to be hosting this conversation on collecting art. Um, it's very similar to the Soho vibe where it's about community um, and connection. And I think you're going to really enjoy hearing from our panelists today. Um, my name is Bronwyn Hunter Shortly, and I'm the Vice President of Art at Peggy. Um, Peggy is hosting this panel tonight, and Peggy is the social marketplace that connects collectors, galleries, and artists. We thought we'd bring together some great collectors who have different backgrounds, journeys, and career paths, but all passionate about art. Um, so really excited to have everyone introduce themselves, um, give a little history of what gets them excited about art and just their personal journey. So maybe we'll start with you, Jared. Um, I thought you might call on me last because I'm, I'm kind of the ringer on this panel. You're going to hear how Victoria and Mark, you know, have distinguished careers in the art world. And I totally do not. Um, I, I work at JP Morgan. Um, this is, this is where I have the disclaimer, you know, all opinions expressed are the opinions of Jared Spencer and, uh, not of JP Morgan Chase or its affiliates. Um, Anyway, I'm, I am just, I don't even know that I would self-identify as a collector, really. I'm just someone who gets a lot of joy from living with art. Um, just by way of, of quick introduction, my grandmother brought me to New York, and specifically, spe specifically the Metropolitan Museum of Art, when I was eight years old. Um, day trip from Connecticut on the bus, super exciting, and... I walked into that museum and I was like, you know, I have to live in the city that has a place like this. And so I came here for college um, 21 years ago and never left. And, um, you know, just as I've progressed in my career and have been able to, to buy art, um, you know, that's just it's a really special way for me to participate in what makes New York City a special place, you know, um, people like me who work at JP Morgan, like, you know, are not what give the city the, the energy that makes this super special. And so connecting to the art world is um, something I found really fulfilling. Answer the question. Yes, beautifully. Mark, do you want to go? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mark HR. I um, have worked in the art world for, uh, oh goodness, about 10 plus years now. I started out in some auction houses, um, worked at some appraisal firms, um, and currently I run a, um, a small insurance company for collectible watches and jewelry. Um, it's called Hodinkee Insurance. And in my non-work hours, I buy way too much art and uh, it kind of sits in a closet much to the chagrin of my spouse. Um, yeah, so happy to be here. All right, Victoria. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Victoria Carey, and I'm an independent art advisor. Um, just to tell you a little bit about what I do, I advise clients on acquisitions and also deal with all aspects of collection management, whether it's research, framing, shipping, installation. Um, I really handle all of that. And um, I've worked in advisory firms, galleries, and now I'm advising independently and living the dream, I guess, <laughs> what I wanted Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think um, one of the amazing things that always stands out to me is you're mentioning New York City and the cultural activity bringing you here. I feel like getting out to cultural events like this panel or going to the Met is really sort of the beginning of the journey of the art collector, whether you choose to call yourself that or not. I think participating in culture is a huge huge part that gets people exciting and then turns them into buyers of art. Um, and I know you two actually have a really fun story about how you sort of met through art. Um, so do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure, I'll take that one. <laughs> uh, but actually, Jared and I met uh, at a virtual art fair in, was it 2020? Yeah, so in 2020, when no one was actually meeting anyone in person, I attended a virtual panel discussion that he was on. And after that, I essentially just uh, uh, struck up a conversation with him online. And I was like, it seems like we're interested in the same stuff. We should actually be friends. So that's that's actually how we met. Yeah, and, and um, you know, just talking about being in New York, I mean, it's one of the amazing things that you can actually meet the artists here who create work. You know, it's not just oh, it's so cool to see these pieces on the wall of a gallery. 
you can actually meet the artists who, who are creating the pieces. Um, and so, you know, Mark and I are appreciators of art and we met, you know, art brought us together and then art also, you know, has brought me into contact you, you, I mean, all of us really into contact with, um, you know, the creative people who are painting and drawing and creating video work or sculpture, um, that just, you know, that really brings a lot of special energy to my own life, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, Victoria, you worked in a number of physical galleries. And, you know, I know those can sometimes be intimidating for someone who might not know that they can just walk in and experience the art. Um, and now you're working directly with collectors a lot. So do you have some advice for them in terms of starting looking? Would it be in the physical space? Is it online? Is it both? Uh, yeah, absolutely. All of the above. Um, a big part of my job is just seeing as much art physically in person as possible. So I go to galleries, you know, spend all day in Tribeca, all day in Chelsea, and just see all of the new shows, just walk around the block and connect with gallerists and catch up with them. Um, so that's a great way to see art. And also I travel to as many art fairs as possible. So um, I'm able to just I love art fairs in the way that it's kind of a snapshot of the art market. You can go there and in a few hours see kind of every gallery's program and see great examples from all the artists there. And also it's kind of a commercial environment where you can discuss pricing, availability, things like that aren't necessarily as open if you just go to a gallery. Um, so I think that's just a great way for new collectors to see what they're drawn to and um, explore. Uh, I think that's a great way to do it. And I'm also always on Instagram. <laughs> um, I'm a little scared to look at my screen time sometimes because I'm always on there, but it's for work. Um, <laughs> but I find so many great artists through there and um, just seeing galleries posting different artists and studio visits and my friends and colleagues doing that. So I think Instagram is just an incredible visual tool for exploring the art world. I have very similar behaviors where I'm like, I can't delete Instagram, even though that's mm -hmm. the thing to do, because that's where I discover and find and can see so much amazing art and sort of feel on top of it. Yeah. You're using it for work, honestly. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I know we talked a little bit about collecting journeys before this panel too. And I know a lot Jared, you discover a lot of artists through Instagram directly, right? Like outside of the gallery ecosystem. And there are a couple different ecosystems, whether it's galleries or artists creating and sharing on Instagram. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your Instagram discovery and how you do it? I don't know if there's too much um, uh, method to my own personal madness, um, but something that I've just found incredibly rewarding. Again, it's the social aspect of it. You know, you follow one artist and they often will be reposting in their stories artists that they find compelling. Um, and I've definitely discovered artists that way. Um, artists that I've become friends with sometimes will recommend to me other artists, which, you know, is kind of the generosity of spirit in the art world that I think people don't expect, you know, someone's like, Oh, you know, um, Robert Clear is this is a you know, he's a really amazing artist in London. You should check out his work. And I ended up buying a piece. And that was a referral from from another artist. Yeah, that's great. And then I think we all have in common some of the beauty of buying art is that you get to live with it. And then it ends up in your space and you can have so many conversations and social interactions around it. Um, Mark, do you have an antidote about a purchase or sort of a social situation where the conversation really revolved around art? Well, first of all, I love how we're giving ourselves excuses for being on Instagram <laughs> and and spending money on it. Uh, but I think the 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 best kind of anecdote I've got about living with art is you know right around the time that. Jared and I met during kind of like the, the pandemic. I attended that uh, one virtual art fair that we were mentioning, and I ended up purchasing a very large scale work of art, which is actually, uh, I'll try to describe it accurately. It's 
uh, a picture of George Washington, but in drag. So it's quite bold. Georgette. Uh, yeah, called Georgette, very affectionately. And I didn't necessarily realize how large she was when I bought her. Uh, and when I went to pick her up, she barely fit into my car. And uh, when I brought her home, the only place um, in my apartment that she could live really was uh, the wall right behind where I take all my Zoom calls. So she's now the background to every single Zoom call I take. It's a She's a wonderful icebreaker. Uh, a bit unprofessional, if you ask me, but I, at a certain point, I've stopped caring. So, yeah, I think that's a really good I example. I love that. Yeah, I actually, when we chatted before this, saw her. So it was fun. Well, or even, I mean, as we were sitting around just a moment ago, um, and I was talking about an artist, Hillary Harkness, whose work is on display at uh, PPOW right now, and I was showing on my phone close-ups of the picture that she painted and then I found oh here's you know scrolling through here's the one showing the entire piece at scale and we were all like wow it's so it's actually really small compared to what you would expect so right Instagram flattens scale for sure yeah absolutely um I think the really interesting thing about that too is you know it can go so fluidly from a virtual art fair to an Instagram, to the Instagram of a gallery. But at the end of the day, it's sort of following sort of what interests you and what gets you excited. And I think everyone can get excited about things. I think people get intimidated by needing to know everything, but it's truly just this funny little journey that we're all taking through the most basic tool, Instagram, to get there, which I think is really special. Um, now, I know a lot of people think about art, everyone, a lot of the headlines have you think about it as an investment. And I think we chatted a little bit about this as well, that, you know, you start purchasing for passion and largely for aesthetic appreciation. Do you do any of you want to speak to if you think of it as an investment or what your main motivation is in the beginning when you're purchasing? I think this would be a good question for you because you're advising clients all the time. Yeah. I definitely have an opinion. <laughs> um, kind of the approach I take is, to put it simply, when I'm collecting art, I just buy things I love and things I want to live with and things I find interesting, and I advise clients to do the same thing. Um, you, of course, have to keep in mind value when you're collecting, but I would never tell a client to purchase something just for financial investment. I think, especially with emerging contemporary art, there just isn't enough data to make those kind of decisions. So I think you just have to go for what you love and what you're drawn to and what you think is interesting. Um, but in terms of value, I think it's important to think about, you know, which gallery is artists working with? Are they trying, are they aiming to place the artists in the best collections, get them institutional exhibitions? Are they garnering critical support. I think all of those kind of things support value in the long term. And I think it's also really critical to acquire great examples of artists. Um, a lot of people can get caught up in getting the right names for their collection when it's really about getting the right examples. And those are going to sustain their value and also be more desirable in the long term. So I think you should buy what you love. If it doesn't grow in value, you have an artwork you love. And if it does grow in value, you have a win-win there. So you can't really go wrong. You love it. 